All AI chatbots right now, like ChatGPT and Google Bard, are based on an architecture called Transformers. Why? Because they are pretty cool. Si Optimum Pride, boring inang in Optimum Pride. <laughs> but not this Transformer. It's this one. This Transformer is really useful thanks to a special mechanism called self-attention that makes these chatbots able to look back at a set of sequential inputs and perform some pretty insane text completion based on the text you feed it, which even made people think AGI was here a year ago given how powerful it is at writing essays for high school students. But if you remember using it to try to do math back in the days, it would even struggle at the most basic level of arithmetic. Even counting was a pretty big problem for them if there were more than 10 values. But of course, things like this only happen at the fundamental level of transformer-based LLMs or chatbots. As companies that provide these AI chatbot services now integrate tools like calculators for AI to use. So it doesn't try to persuade you 1 plus 1 is 3, which makes it more suitable for practical use. On a side note, if you do want to fully realize the true capability of ChatGPT and not just use 1% of its power, HubSpot has this free comprehensive guide on how to enhance your work productivity with ChatGPT. This is perfect for anyone who wants to improve their working efficiency while keeping up with rapidly growing AI technologies. Aside from the 37-page in-depth guide that they provide, there are also other useful visualizations such as ChatGPT flowcharts, instruction templates, content refinement checklists, and a few more. My favorite one is probably the AI adaptation checklists, where I can go through the list and discover what optimization methods I can still implement for my work, especially when I have many different range of tasks I need to do. So to get this free bundle, all you have to do is check out the link down in the description, and I highly recommend it for anyone that wants to get more familiar with ChatGPT. Thank you HubSpot for making these free resources and for sponsoring this video. Anyways, but adding a layer of supervision like using calculators makes it a bit less ideal. On top of that, it is still pretty limited if you want to summarize papers or super large documents because the precision is still not as good as reading it manually. The exact details are still really easy to miss and chatbots do really gloss it over with some very generic and oversimplified summaries. So if there is something that can solve the fundamental problems that transformers have, the whole LLM and AI chatbots field might just be revolutionized to a whole new level. Introducing Mamba. People say Mamba is like LSTM and Transformers had a baby, and if you don't know what that means, it's okay, me too. All I know is that they named it Mamba because there's just too many S's in the abbreviation, but I think they might be onto something. Okay, so the current state-of-the-art text-based AIs like ChatGPT get exponentially more expensive to train and run the bigger they are. Like Meta is planning on getting the compute that will worth around 600k H100s just to train LLMs at the end of this year. Oh, that's around 10 billion worth of GPUs, by the way. And Zuck just casually mentioned that, wow. And if it's being used to train transformers, it seems pretty inefficient to scale up even more. And the root cause of this exponential term, which makes transformers more inefficient to scale up, is transformers' attention mechanism, where it needs to attend all the positions of information, which makes longer text harder to work with. So some big brain researchers over at CMU and Princeton dug up an old architecture called state space models and refined it to create something called the S4 model, short for a structured state space sequence models, oh, that was a lot of S, and implement it into something called Mamba. This research paper has caught a lot of people's attention because it's so transformative. First, it not only solves the scaling problem that the transformers have, where the computation doesn't scale exponentially and only linearly, but second, it is not using the attention mechanism and can still recall any details you provided with in full precision. For a more technical perspective, it is the first alternative model architecture to achieve benchmarks that surpasses the strongest transformer recipe. Think of the difference like you going to a party, and if it's hosted by transformers, then the attention mechanism makes you dap up everyone so you know who all of them are and everyone has to dap up everyone else too to get to know everyone's relations with each other. But if the party is hosted by Mamba, the S4 model lets you only need to say hi to the host of the party that already know who's who and the relations between everyone. So as you can see, Mamba saves you so much more time when you increase the amount of people attending the party. And fundamentally, the S4 model is a completely different architecture from Transformers. And you can even say it's more similar to LSTM 
and recurrent models. However, LSTM needs the output from the previous hidden state and the global input to generate the next prediction. So every layer needs to wait for its previous layer to finish its generation to be able to proceed, which makes it extremely slow. So for the S4 models that Mamba uses, each hidden state is only dependent on the global input, so there's no wasting time waiting for the result from the last layer and whatnot. On top of having no non-linearity between hidden states, it makes the calculations insanely fast. Since it can calculate everything everywhere all at once, you can just finish all the matrix multiplications at the start and call it a day. This improved the quadratic scaling that the transformer has from big O of n squared down to scaling linearly at big O of n if you use Mamba, which potentially means that if there's ever a Mamba-based chatbot that's as big as GPT-4, for the same price at 1 cent per 1k tokens, you would get 1k to the power of 2 tokens instead, which is like 1000 times cheaper than GPT-4. On the other hand, if you recognize this author's name somewhere, he's actually also the author of Flash Attention that doubled Transformers efficiency not only once, but twice for Flash Attention version 1 and 2. And for Mamba, they proposed something very similar whereby moving less stuff between GPU HBM aka the slow memory within the GPU and the SRAM aka the fast memory, they reduced even more calculation time within the hidden states. And now to put all the speed up into perspective, it is 100 times faster than transformers at 64k context length. With all these speed up, how are the actual performance? So Mamba's architecture can be described as a combination of S4 model and a gated function that is used in modern neural networks we all know and love, with an addition of a selective mechanism that propagates or discard information based on the relevance of each token in the input sequence. Once something is discarded, it will be forgotten forever, but once it's kept, Mamba can recite it perfectly with no errors. Thanks to the current GPU technology, this means Mamba can handle extremely long sequences, which then gave rise to some pretty interesting properties. For language modeling, the Mamba 3B model they trained outperforms transformers of the same size and matches transformers twice its size, both in pre-training and downstream evaluation. It has better throughput with increase in batch size, and it is perfect for things that need precise and long context, like DNA modeling, audio synthesis, and explaining why your mom is so fast. As Transformers dominated LLMs, Mamba knew it was almost time to take action. Thus, Transformer asked Mamba, Are your hidden states linear because you're a state space model? Or are you a state space model because your hidden states are linear? And before Mamba used the technique hardware-aware state expansion, for unbeknownst to Mamba, Transformers was scalable. It has rope within its ecosystem, and in that moment, the Mamba could have saved itself. But it did not know two key things. The first is, always bet on the attention mechanism. And the second, Transformer knew its scaling law. Then Transformer questioned Mamba, can you still recall your context? Mamba replied, if I did not propagate it, I might have a little trouble. But would you lose? Nah, I'd win. Because throughout RNNs and attention, I alone am the subquadratic one. Downside are still in the discovery stage and I'll talk about them later, but researchers have already got to work and published not one, but two research on using Mamba in vision. Unlike text which only has sequential relationships, visual data is extremely position sensitive and needs the entire image for context in order to make sense of it. So in this first Vision Mamba research called the Vision Mamba, they proposed a new backbone called Vim, not that Vim, which is a generic vision backbone with bidirectional Mamba blocks. This design choice lets image sequences be able to contain positional information and compress it bidirectionally into the state space models. And once again, some promising results were shown compared to vision transformers. On top of not needing attention, it has a subquadratic compute time compared to vision transformers, and also three times smaller in model size with comparable performances. And thanks to the good long context properties that Mamba has, it might just be perfect for analyzing high-res images from satellites or microscopes. It might just work on long form video analysis too. The other Vision Mamba research called V Mamba was funnily published a day after Vision Mamba, and in this one, it did show that V Mamba's performance stagnated after more than 40 million parameters. This might be a sign of inability to scale, which might be a bad news. 
However, they did state that the 40 million parameters VMAMBA model encountered some errors during training, so all hopes might not be lost yet. This research also did prove that VMAMBA may be the best in high resolution classification for its weight class, so the future of Mamba might still be bright in the vision side. But what's even brighter is that mixture of experts being applied onto Mamba is as promising as ever. If you don't know what MOE is, feel free to check out this video. And in the MOE Mamba's research paper, they have shown that MOE Mamba requires 2.2 times less training steps than normal Mamba and still holds the same quality. So how much better can this really get? And that was a lot of upgrades in such a short amount of time. And these promising properties might just change the landscape of language models very soon. But what might be truly revolutionary may be in this paper, Mamba Byte. From the Mamba paper, we already learned that Mamba can do extremely long sequences, which is perfect for DNA modeling, right? So what would happen if we switch out DNA modeling and bits and bytes instead. The model wouldn't be able to learn directly from byte patterns, which would then be able to form what characters are, and form what words are, and form what expressions are, and form what sentences are, and form what paragraphs are, and form what statements are. Like transformers suck at doing extremely long sequences, that's why there's tokenization, and why transformers don't operate based on characters or words. But for Mamba, these presumptions that we use for transformers can all be tossed out of the window, and when it learns directly from raw bytes, it completely removes a layer of bias that subword tokenization would give to the model, while keeping all the benefits from Mamba like the linear scaling, faster inference, precise recall, and even remove the obstacle which are the tokens that limit the transformers from going above and beyond. This might actually be the architecture that can build true multi-model models as we move away from tokenization. But why does tokenization suck? A uh, One quick example is that numbers become really weird and disjoint with tokenizations, and some of them will be chunked together due to tokenizations, which makes LMs not that great at doing long or big arithmetics. Another example is that when you ask an LM about a particular letter in a word or their location, it would struggle to pinpoint because tokenization screws up how the model perceives things. Since their base unit is a token, not a character or a letter like what we are used to, it lacks the concepts of characters and even words in many cases. And here's an example generated by the Mamba byte model that has nearly 1 billion parameters. You can pause it now to read it, and as you can see, it is able to continue in the style of the context and very effectively recall the character names over hundreds of bytes later. But the story it generated still kind of doesn't make any sense, and it casually name dropped Prince Williams out of the blue, which is pretty random, and he wasn't even born by the time this play was written. However, it easily outperforms other byte level models and shows competitive results with transformers. But everything must have a downside, right? While this paper called repeat after after me, which has a pretty funny name, did mention that Mamba or S4 models have a potentially big downside called lost in the middle, which means that when the given context length is too long, it would lose certain information forever due to its selective properties. But other papers did prove the opposite on Transformers++ where Mamba is better at remembering specific bits of information, so definitely more scale up and tests are needed on this. This paper does have some other benchmarks that shows Mamba's shortcomings, so if you're interested in more technical details, you can refer to the paper. But so far, Mamba has really proved itself to be a very prominent architecture that can take on the current industry standard that is Transformers, and may have a chance to create a paradigm shift just like when people switch from GANs to Diffusion after they found out how much better Diffusion is at generating images. From some NDA sources, some companies are already testing or experimenting with this architecture to create something that would challenge the status quo. So subscribe to stay tuned. Thank you guys for watching, check out my cool little AI website leaderboard which follows the total traffic of various popular AI related websites for you to stay up to date. A big shout out to Andrew Leschelius, Chris Ledoux, Alex J, Alex Maurice, Miguel Lim, Deegan, Fifal, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't and I'll see you all in the next one.